You know, the only thing funner than destroying these two planes today on the bench is going to be, well, taking it out of the runway and seeing if the idea works. Uh, yeah, we're going to be doing some slicing and dicing. Let's see what happens. Let's put this thing together. All right, so from what the intro said, uh, yeah, we're going to be doing a little bit of uh, editing of these planes today. Um, I'm pretty excited for this. This is a project I've wanted to do for some time. The F-18 platform seemed like a good one. Uh, this is uh, the Motion RC's uh, free wing, uh, specifically F-18. Uh, this is the Royal Mace's build. Uh, these are the non-performance version. Uh, these are the uh, standard 64mm uh, 5-blade EDF, and I believe it has a 30 amp BSC. Um, $129. Uh, each and that kind of gave me a little bit of wiggle room to say okay well you know I can hack and slash and have some fun and do an experiment because I've never seen this so <clears throat> the the goal behind this really ultimately is well uh, a little bit of fun at Tate's expense Tate's most hated plane on the planet is the twin Mustang um, now we've done the twin st uh, storch uh, based off the e-flight uh, uh, oh no, sorry, the flight test, flight test uh, uh, foam board storage. That was a lot of fun. Didn't fly very well. Well, Tate's really become enamored lately with the, uh, with the jets and him being a, a, an Air Force man. Well, <laughs> I can see why. So I'm going to take two of these things and uh, I'm going to try and make a, uh, a twin jet fighter. Again, I've Googled the heck out of this. I can't even find anyone who's done this in an RC platform, let alone crazy enough to do a plane. So, uh, yeah, that's the goal. Should be exciting uh, as long as we can make this thing strong. Now, to that end, uh, there is a lot of planning that has actually gone into this. So, I chose the F-18, uh, specifically the, the free wing version here, um, because of a couple reasons. The first is uh, the wings here where they connect to the fuselage, it's perfectly horizontal to what would be the next plane next to it. Um, so that gives us a, a really easy way to square up what this looks like. Uh, secondly, we have kind of a natural cut line that we want to follow, which is where the aileron ends, um, and that's going to be pretty slick, I think. Uh, a little bit of carbon fiber in there, and we'll have a nice strong union. Uh, thirdly, is once we've done that, and we get our overlap, so this is a, an approximation of what we're looking for, um, we found that uh, there's another jet produced uh, by motion. Um, Sold by Motion. Uh, I think it's produced by Freewing. Yeah, it is. Um, the De Havilland 112. Uh, that is an interesting little plane in and of its own. Um, not necessarily something that, you know, does it for me, but uh, I started looking at the tail section of that plane, trying to find twin boom, twin fuse, twin something, and found that the, uh, well, the, the, the replacement kit is the perfect width for mounting in here and replacing not only the inside elevators but also um, joining the planes together and giving it a little bit more structure. So that's how we've kind of arrived at this idea. Uh, I think this is going to work out pretty good. Um, so really the only thing that's left to do is just remove a few component parts. Now I've also waffled back and forth on well what is the right look for this plane? What do we do with the uh, the rudders? Do we keep both sets so we have four rudders? Do we, um, you know, pull off a set and we have only exterior rudders? Or do we swap these and place them on the inside of the airframe? Tough call. Uh, really, I'm not sure what we're going to do here yet. I think we're just going to um, kind of kind of fake it as we go. Um, you know, that doesn't even look too bad with the, uh, the two going the same direction. Uh, so maybe, maybe we'll even try that. Uh, yeah, so, you know, basically all we have to do for this build is we remove four screws, uh, which hold the main wings on, two screws that hold the elevators on, pull the control linkages off, and, uh, we can take and, and, uh, there we go, remove our wings, which we're going to then be joining together. 
We're not going to be needing the servos uh, in the center uh, wing portion. So all of that we can basically cut off, set aside. Um, and we do have a small carbon fiber rod uh, that we're going to be looking at reinforcing. And uh, there is actually a second uh, tube hole on the leading edge of the wing, which might work well for us. Uh, we'll have to take and, and look at that. So why don't we go ahead and dive in. Um, we're going to do just a little bit of time lapse here. It just makes things go a little easier and uh, we'll get this thing broken down and uh, start looking at what it's going to take to put it back together. You know, it's kind of funny. Um, I was just uh, in the process of doing, you know, the time lapse and started to take some measurements and whatnot. And originally, I had thought about taking the uh, the wings and actually um, having a joiner in the center of them. So I took the two fuselages, I put them side by side, and I thought to myself, "Holy crap, that actually looks really good." Um, I hate to say it, but I think what I want to do now is instead of having that longer wing joiner and tail section, uh, I think what I want to do is actually go uh, with this setup um, where we only have maybe, geez, uh, an inch, an inch and a quarter of wing that we're reusing from uh, those on either side, joining these together. Um, I think that it'll provide us a much stronger connection um, and honestly, it looks pretty dang cool. Uh, so that being the case, um, maybe what we'll end up doing here is uh, we'll take and, and still use a portion of that. I don't know, maybe we'll, uh, we'll take the two tail sections and we'll join them together. So uh, let's do some more experimenting. Uh, it's just funny how this stuff grows and, and changes and, and whatnot as you actually get your hands into it and start, to start tinkering. Um, I'm really, I'm really liking what I'm seeing. I think the uh, the the double angled uh, uh, rudder tails also will look pretty slick. So uh, yeah, I think that's the direction we're going to go here. Um, we'll just find something that we can use that's strong to connect these two pins together. And my gosh, we're we're set. So uh, time to get the foam cutter out and uh, figure out exactly how we're going to finish this thing up. Pretty cool. Alrighty, so I have my foam cutter set up here, and uh, we're running a, almost exactly, uh, uh, what is that, 30 millimeters off of our uh, uh, center line there. And uh, I've gone ahead and pulled my servo lead out. The, uh, the carbon fiber spar is really securely in there. I'm going to use that to my advantage later. Uh, so we're going to have to do a couple cuts, um, but uh, I think we'll be alright with that. So. Yeah, let's uh, let's rip the band-aid off here. We're gonna keep it flat against our fence on that side, and uh, just let our carbon fiber rod skirt across the top. There we go, nice clean cut. Yeah, nothing on the interior getting in the way. That's a good sign. All right, do the same thing here. Nice, steady, clean cut. Beautiful. Oh, got to pull out just as gently as we went in. There we go. Okay, very good. All right, so we can see that that wants, uh, wants to have a little play there. We're going to give it a twist. And nice. So we freed it from our carbon fiber rod. And we're going to pull this out entirely, so we'll have to work on that gently. We'll actually try and save this wing tip here. I might use that in a future project. You never know. Uh, but uh, having this as a single piece actually join through both wings and fuses, wing portions <laughs> and fuses, I think is going to be ideal. So we'll go ahead and set this one up. Pull this uh, servo wire up. There we go. 
Oh, we broke our filament. All right. Well, we'll get that finished cutting through and then we'll hop back to it. All right, well, that went really well. Um, so there are wing halves. Uh, well, wing joiners, wing portions we chopped. <laughs> and uh, you can see, other than my little wire snafu, boy, those turned out just about perfect. I don't think you could ask for better than that. Um, so next, uh, we have our, our, our carbon fiber rod, our original rod. And, uh, you know, looks like we can see from the glue that protrudes Oh, about yay far on both sides. Um, so when we take and, and actually join this, so let's go ahead and we'll approximate this. There we go. We need this much carbon fiber rod sticking out of the side, so we'll trim that up. Now while we're trimming it, I thought to myself, well, you know, let's go ahead and see if we can't do something to kind of strengthen the core of this. And so we're going to use a, another carbon fiber rod. This is a 5 mil rod. And... Um, we can see our, our wing profile there. We're going to run through a, a another support here and here. Just the length of our, our piece. So we'll cut those. Uh, we're going to use a, a hot foam cutter because we want to keep that wall around our hole as, as strong structurally as we can. And that's a great trick to do that. Um, looks like there's these, these holes here from the factory. I think this must be what they they use to hang up the wing sections to paint them because uh, they serve no purpose and they're certainly uneven. So kind of interesting, but that that's nice because this preserves not only the strength, uh, but also our simple four uh, screw pattern here. In the future, if we ever chose to, you know, separate these planes, turn it into two planes, we buy a single uh, wing kit and, uh, you know, for 15 bucks, we've got this thing flying again. So uh, we're going to glue these two sections together with foam tack, foam tack in our rod, and uh, yeah, let's uh, let's get to that real quick after we make some cuts. Alrighty, so we have our carbon fiber uh, supports, uh, our original rod, and uh, I've gone ahead and just used my little uh, foam uh, uh, cutting tool to ring out these uh, these spaces here for these uh, supports. Hopefully we're in the ballpark. Oh yeah, that'll be perfect. We'll force that in with a little glue on it and call that a home run. Okay, well that's looking great. Uh, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab a little acetone. Um, and that's just because I sure like this to be easy to install and remove. And we're gonna see if we can't uh, clean up the end of this rod. Acetone and foam are, you know, dead set enemies. And uh, boy, that's uh, that's not bad. There we go. So now we know install is not going to be any kind of a problem. You know, it's uh, 10 seconds, and both the ends of our rod are nice and clean. Cool. All right. Let's go ahead and uh, let's put this uh, center section together then. So we're going to take our. Uh, our foam tack here and we're going to use that. We're going to make sure that we have clearance on all of our uh, carbon fiber spars. Get that to, to go through all the way. There we go. All right. And uh, so first things first is our foam tack. And we're going to join. Ooh, almost did that the opposite way, didn't I? Yeah, sure did. I'm going to Join these two halves together. And uh, foam tack's great stuff. This stuff stays flexible, uh, which is nice after it sets. It'll absorb some of the energy in a crash. It's easy to take apart, rebuild, repair, compared to using like a, a CA glue. Um, I, I find it to be just the best stuff for making uh, this kind of model stuff. All right, we're going to put our skewer through or uh, our carbon fiber rod just temporarily to kind of keep things lined and uh, it is a contact adhesive so we're going to pull that apart and give it a couple seconds there we go that'll give us one heck of a strong bond that's just fantastic okay we'll take our uh, carbon fiber spacers gonna make sure that we 
can get that all the way through. It looks good. And this guy too. This one was giving me just a little grief. Uh, hopefully I don't have to get that uh, cutter out. There we go. Okay. All right, so now, clean off the tip of my bottle so it'll come out easy. Keep everything easy and clean. Uh, we're gonna take this cavity, uh, the tube goes through, and we're gonna give that a healthy, healthy dose of foam tack. There we go, get it down in there. Do the same on this side. There we go. Pretty happy with that. We can twist as we install. Spread that glue around. Grab this one. Same thing. There we go. There's our wing joiner. Not bad. Just wipe off any excess glue. Line it all up. And uh, we'll give it a few minutes to cure. Uh, one other trick I'm going to do is uh, I've got my hinge tape and uh, I'm gonna run some hinge tape along this joint as well, just as a, a precaution, uh, help keep everything nice and, and straight. There we go, help that line up. Cool? All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to set one of our planes up as a master and a slave. Now. Uh, nicely, these things come, these plane kits come with uh, a black or a white little uh, fin here. Uh, I've chosen the white for my slave and the, uh, the black for the, the one who's going to be holding the radio. Uh, so I need to get all my wires run from here to the other plane uh, for this, uh, this to work as a slave. So we only have four channels we have to care about. Now, we're not using our uh, our servo for that center there, uh, but we're gonna leave it connected. It's not the end of the world. Um, these are actually impregnated inside the foam, and uh, it would be a real pain in the butt to see if we could find and fish out a, a, a connector in there for the Ys. So we're gonna go ahead and just leave those there for the ailerons and for the, uh, the elevators. Um, we have our throttle cable, and we have our nose gear for steering which will be really nice with the uh, the dual setup now each plane will have to have its own battery and power source and that's just fine uh, so what we need to do though is we need to to get that over to the other plane uh, the opening right here would be a natural kind of candidate you would think but again yeah there we go you can see that it's uh, it's impregnated in the foam so I'm not super happy about that, A, and B, if we're using our, uh, our, our wing joiner here, uh, we'd have to do a pretty decent hole right where our carbon fiber uh, spar is, and I don't wanna do that. I wanna keep that strength. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take and run my wires across right here in the front portion of um, the wing leading edge. Not my favorite thing in the world to do, but I only have four servo wires, four extension wires I have to worry about, you know, and uh, let me grab one of these. You can see that these aren't, you know, terribly thick. I don't have to trench in too heavily uh, with my, my foam cutter. So I think what I'm going to do, and in fact, let's, uh, let's just go ahead and do it. We can all see whether this is a good or bad idea together. Um, so I'm going to grab my hot foam cutter. And uh, let's turn this thing on. We'll set that down here to, to warm up. And I think I'm going to go basically straight through right here. All the way through. Um, I can take and uh, potentially um, cut through the bottom here. Um, I don't have to make a perfect tunnel. That may help. Um, and uh, it looks like we have a wall, a ceiling, to uh, our inlet here. So there's actually a gap there where I can hide those wires possibly and even have easier time fishing them. I think that's the goal. That's, uh, well, we'll see. That's a beautiful thing when you start friend complaining. You never know what you're going to have to do. I'm going to just kind of tilt this so I can see it. Hopefully, 
We'll keep that in frame on camera, mostly for you guys. And uh, here's where we here's where we commit. So I'm going to use this seam as my guide. All right. So we can kind of see where that lines up is roughly right there on uh, our joiners. There we go. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and punch straight in all the way through. Go up, over, and down. And uh, not bad. I need to go a little further, it looks like, and down um, because of the heads on those servo leads. There we go. And I think that that will work very, very well. And uh, we haven't made it too ugly and we can take a nice piece of tape and hide that right there. So let's go ahead and give you guys a better look at what I just did. There we go. And uh, we have come clean through the interior. Uh, you know, being that I've got it at an advantageous angle, let's go ahead and just clean that up just a little bit. There we go. Nice. Nice. I'm pretty happy with that, actually. Hopefully you guys can see that. All right. So I'm going to do that to the other plane as well. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and run my servo extension leads. And uh, we'll install this guy. And uh, we're actually not using the dealer on. That can actually just tuck away now. We don't have to have that even in the mix. There we go. We'll get this uh, all connected up. And we'll run a similar channel through here. And uh, then we'll try and hide that detail the best we can. All right, and there we go. Uh, that was actually quite easy to lace through. I had a, a pair of forceps to, to lend a hand. Uh, always a, a handy tool to have, especially when you're modeling and playing with, uh, you know, small confined spaces. So, um, yeah, basically all I have to do now is uh, take our, our leads here and connect them up. And this, uh, this side of the plane is completely finished. Um, we've you know, got to add a battery at some point and uh, we'll take care of the, the rest of our, our wiring uh, on the other side. We'll have some uh, Ys and we'll have to do something a little tricky with the, uh, the throttle lead, speaking of which, there it is, um, which is uh, uh, usually you have to take and, and cut out that, that center wire uh, um, for this to, to work and we just use the grounds. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll get there and uh, my gosh, we're almost done coming together All right, so I thought I'd uh, film this kind of the fun part here um, So we're gonna go ahead and, and start getting this assembled um, So we're gonna take our our servo wires I'm gonna Run those little beauties through here into the other uh, the other cavity there we go. Okay, and hopefully we uh, we got them through uh, into the right place. Yeah, I find one, two, three, and four wires. Perfect. Okay, well, this is exciting. Let's join these things together. Move this in frame here for everyone. Always tricky doing this filming and building and trying to get angles. Uh, always ends up being a little more work than you think. All right, there's our joiner. We'll connect that through. Oh, would you look at that? like it's meant to be and uh, we'll go ahead and give each one of these wires a tug oh wonderful and that'll hide down in that little trough 
just perf perfectly. And we'll take and run some uh, some wing tape over that just to hide that a little bit better. Uh, but uh, there we go, four screws, and uh, this is all joined up. And uh, all we have to do then is is work on our our tail section here. And so uh, let me get this all wrapped up and. Uh, we can dive into what we're going to do down here. All right, so, uh, you know, after looking at everything, um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take uh, my elevators here from the center. I'm actually going to just uh, find my center point here and uh, cut it, join them together, uh, reinforce it. Um, we'll have to see how that, that looks when we get there. Probably a little, little piece of carbon fiber uh, joining the two. But, uh, you know, being that they're going to both be running their own independent servos, that shouldn't become a problem. Um, so I, I think we'll get something rather elegant looking out of this. Uh, so, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, we'll pull these off, get a cut, and uh, yeah, we'll just see what this looks like. All right, so uh, here we have it. Uh, boy, i got to be honest, that turned out pretty darn slick. Uh, again, I just used my hot wire cutter uh, for my foam, and uh, not too bad. Uh, let's go ahead and install this, see what it looks like. Now, uh, just because I've measured twice, cut once, I realized that we have a mechanical problem. If we disconnected our wing, it would be easier to install these. Uh, in fact, these should be installed first, being that they're joined. But, uh, eh, you know. <laughs> If you hold it at the right angle and you give it a little love, all right, <laughs> that'll work for us. Uh, we'll go ahead and install our control rods. We're going to install our uh, screws that retain these, and uh, then we'll uh, we'll gap it, glue and tape it, and uh, yeah, these things turned out way better than I expected. It's got that kind of still aggressive look, um, kind of that. Uh, you know, a little bit futuristic well jet fighter look if you will so yeah very very slick overall um, so what I'm going to do is uh, foam tack the center there and then uh, I'm going to get everything nicely lined up and I'm going to put actually a very small uh, piece of carbon fiber I'm going to run it right across here just take my hot knife etch it in glue it in tape over it and uh, that'll be done so yeah, uh, let's, uh, let's hurry and wrap that up and then we can get this thing on the table and uh, fire it up. Well folks, here we have it. Uh, <laughs> I have to be really honest. It turned out way cooler than I expected and I think I'm in love with this plane. Originally I set out to, to try and punk Tate and uh, He's not going to get this plane, probably. <laughs> I can't believe how well this turned out. Really, truly. Um, so, again, these are, you know, small little planes. They're cheap. They're inexpensive. So doing something like this is kind of fun. Uh, it's a four-channel plane. And uh, the fourth channel isn't our rudder. It's actually just our steering gear. Well, I'm going to do one better. Uh, as I've been sitting here getting ready to film and, and uh, do this uh, this extra, show you guys how it turned out, uh, I thought, you know, what would be really cool is differential thrust. And then I'd have my rudder. And so I, I think I'm going to set this up for, for that. Extra five minutes, probably 10 minutes, and, uh, and that'll be a, a pretty sweet deal where uh, I can independently, you know, apply propulsion and uh, bang the plane accordingly uh, with as it would be with rudders. All right, so I'm sure you're all doing what I'm doing. I, I want to get right to the best part. Just get to it. Let's do a thrust check. So normally, again, these are uh, three cell in this version. Uh, they have a three and a four cell version. Three cell, 30 amp ESC, five blade, 64 millimeter EDF. Our airframe now has two of those uh, combined. So let's see how this uh, let's see how this runs. Let's see here. Throttle cut off. Here we go. <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> it turned out fantastic. That is amazing. <laughs> Um, 
all the surfaces are great uh, ailerons look great I will say they're really far apart which can be good for 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 getting the, the plane to bank like we want but they're also very small surfaces compared to now the overall width of the plane so one possible future mod may be extending that aileron and uh, throwing a couple more hinges in and, and just giving us a little more control surface um, we don't need any help when it comes to elevator <laughs> with that centerpiece moving too wow this thing turned out awesome oh did i really what all right throttle cuts on i know it's like a running joke uh there's our steering up front both gears moving in tandem. This thing will perform and, and handle really well on the ground. Uh, we ended up taking and going with the uh, the dual banked out uh, uh, rudder, uh, uh, the, the tail fins here. I, I think that looks the best configuration after uh, really trying everything. I, I think it looks great. And then <laughs> we have quad rear landing gears under there. I, I think that's just fantastic. So we Frankenplane this sucker together. The first that we've ever been able to find twin jet fighter and also uh, the twin Hornet. And uh, boy, it turned out too good. Uh, we'll have to try this with some other airframes and see what we can do. But uh, there you have it. It's a cheap, easy project. We'll take it out, maintenance, see how it flies. And hey, listen, this is, this is one to give a try. So uh, yeah, I, I couldn't be more pleased. Anyways, uh, Twin Hornet, uh, again, um, beautiful plane, and uh, until we get this thing made, keep flying.